Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire, and this week I'm gonna show you how to create an ephemera background for watercolor. Now, the ephemera background I love for acrylic and collage, but that surface is not going to be friendly with watercolor, with pencil eraser, with uh, pen and ink and watercolor like I do my watercolor sketching. So Golden has a product called Watercolor Ground that will help us to prepare Pair and go over the ephemera and over the acrylic gloss gel so that we get a surface that's much like paper. So today I'm going to show you how to set that up so that you can do your next watercolor sketch on a fun and interesting ephemera background. Welcome back. So today I am going to show you how to create an ephemera base layer and instead of applying the acrylic encaustic effect over the top of it, we're going to prepare it so that you can sketch and paint watercolor on it. So I'm starting out with Frederick's watercolor canvas board. This is a 100% archival cotton canvas. It's got a beautiful... Um, surface to it um it's 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 not like the weave of canvas it's almost like a linen and it's a very fine weave so if you want it to work directly on this surface it's got a beautiful very um effective tooth and i love 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 this product um it also has a very rigid hardboard core you can't even you can't even bend it. Now, normal, normal canvas panels just have a cardboard core and you can really flex and bend them, but this, you can't even bend because of that hardboard core. It's not gonna bend, it's not gonna flex, it's not gonna um, warp, and it's also sturdy and heavy. It's much heavier and sturdier than your typical um, cheap uh, canvas panel. So I love and I highly recommend this product. I'm using the watercolor canvas board right now because the mixed media canvas board is out of stock but they are essentially the same surface. So um, this is eight by eight and I'm just gonna unwrap it. And because it doesn't flex and because it's so rigid, it's great for gluing the ephemera to because it's really gonna stay nice and, and flat. So I've got, um, this is my favorite brush for gluing down the ephemera. Um, it's an expensive brush. It's a Princeton Catalyst um, poly tip bristle flat and it's the largest one they make. Um, I like it because it has very rigid bristles. The bristles are very, very rigid. It is the same brand of brush that I use to collage with. Um, and so the rigidity of the bristles is, is the tool that I use to press and apply, and apply pressure to make sure my papers stay down flat. So if this brush is not in your budget, I think it's about $25, uh, but I use it uh, all the time. As you can see, it's very, very well loved. Um, I use it for all my ephemera base layers, as well as the encaustic acrylic effect on top. Anyway, if this is not in your budget, you're going to look for a, a brush that has rigid bristles, not soft. They need to be real rigid because this is our tool to get the paper flat. Um, I'm gluing it down with gloss gel medium. You could use matte uh, because we're going to go over it with a product called Watercolor Ground by Core. Core is uh, manufactured by Golden Paints and Core is their watercolor line and that stands for Quality of Results. And this is the coating that we're gonna put over the top of everything that will allow you to draw with pencil and watercolor on this surface. You can't draw with pencil on top of acrylic gel medium and you can't watercolor on top of acrylic gel medium. So we are gonna use this to give us uh, the watercolor ground. It's also um, slightly opaque so it's going gonna, it's gonna to knock back or tone back the intensity of the black and white of our ephemera and make it a little more of a subtle effect. Okay, so I buy my uh, glue by the gallon, so I've got that off to the side, and I'm just going to put this on a sheet of palette paper because I know I'm going to get glue over the edges, and I love my non-stick craft mat surface. It Nothing sticks to it. Glue, gesso, varnish, paint, nothing. Everything comes off with a wet sponge, but I'm just going to work on the palette sheet just to, um, just to keep it so that I, I don't have to wipe it off. Anyway, um, okay, so... Ephemera. I get ephemera. Uh, people often, often ask me, where do I get my ephemera? So I'm super lucky. I get my ephemera 
ephemera in a couple of different ways. One, people send it to me. Everybody knows that I use it and they send it to me. They, they clear out their mother's house and they say, hey, Elizabeth, I've got, you know, a gallon of, of um, uh, stamps, a gallon Ziploc bag of postage stamps and um, all kinds of uh, old papers, junk papers. Do you want them? I'll send them to you. Uh, my, my friend Mary sent me a giant box of blueprints recently. Um, I've got tons of... Um, of um, sheet music that, that someone sent me. Uh, my friend Denise gave me these amazing ledger pages recently. So I've got some old book pages. Um, I've got some taxes from 1972, uh, canceled stamps, uh, some old typewriter type, uh, 1970 tax. The only thing you have to be careful of is you want to make sure that whatever ink that these things are done with, that they're not going to smear. So you can do a little test. Like I think this smears and I think I figured that out earlier. You can do a little test with the glue and see if it's going to smear. Um, or, or if it does, you can just put another piece of paper over the top of it because some things do smear. The printed materials aren't going to smear. Uh, this is in pencil that generally doesn't smear. Um, so the only thing I'm concerned about is the ballpoint pen and some, some smears and some doesn't, uh, this won't smear either. So generally what I do is I kind of give myself an idea of like the layout and what I'm going to use because some, uh, things are really important that I want to have on there and other things are just sort of filler. So this is just an eight by eight. So I don't, um, I could do it with one big sheet, but I thought I would add a little more elements of interest to it. Um, so you just have to sort of lay it on there and see what you think. You could keep it all in this off-white kind of yellow tone if you wanted to, or you could mix it up with a bright white and the off-white. This is real bright white, but like I said, the watercolor ground is going to sort of tone it all back to an even uh, value. Um, let's see. I've got a, this is kind of some a little bit of cool handwriting, but it's not much. So I generally lay it out so I can give myself an idea of where I'm going to go. And then you're going to figure that your subject will go be pretty much in the middle. So if there's things that you definitely want to see, like these postage stamps, you'll put them out on the corners. You want to put that stuff out on the periphery because your subject will generally be in the middle. And so it's going to block what's in the middle. So what you want to put in the middle is the stuff that you are, um, that you're least, um, fond of, or that you're okay with, um, with losing, uh, in, in the image so that you don't, you don't see it. So, okay. So I'm going to go with this giant ledger page and I'm going to do it. I might do it. That'll be uh, to be determined whether it's sideways or vertical when I ultimately paint on it. So I could do the whole thing. That's not going to leave me a lot of room for, for much else. I could do part of it right here. And then, so something big like this, I, I would use on a larger format. Um, I could put this out to the corner. I do love postage stamps. Um, everybody, everybody loves sheet music. This is a little Irving Berlin. So I could, I could use the title, but I would definitely want to put that out towards the edge. So let's see how that looks. So always keeping in mind that whatever's in the middle is pretty much going to be covered up. Unless you know you're going to have an off-to-the-side composition and then you put your stuff on the other side. So you do want to keep in mind what you're going to be putting on top. All right, so that could go out here kind of nicely. We could also bring it right to the edge with, with the Irving, but if this piece is framed, it'll get lost if we go right to the edge. So I'll go a, a quarter of an inch from the edge. You want to keep that in mind too. A frame molding is going to overlap by about a quarter of an inch. So when you sign your piece or you have stuff that you want to go right to the edge, bring it, um, don't, don't bring it right to the right to the bottom. Okay. So there's that, but now this is a little short here in the middle. So we're going to have to put something in the middle. So let's see if we can get part of this typewriter text. You want to read what you put in there just in case you pick something weird. Um, let's see, let's cut this here and we'll do that. This is upside down and that's right side up. So no matter how you flip this, something's going to be upside down and that's okay. Upside down, we cannot read upside down. So if you want your ephemera to be really subtle and not something that people read, in addition to having this kind of opaque color over it, 
have it upside down. It's very difficult for people to read upside down and then it just becomes a pattern. So anything that you really want to have a little more subtle, you go upside down. Okay, so then I could put this here. So that would be kind of nice. That'll be a nice layout, although pretty, pretty symmetrical. Maybe I want to go for something that's a little less symmetrical. Like maybe I put this here and shorten this or put this here. This is a composition. Another thing to consider as a composition, even though I know this is going to bleed. I hate to use it if I know it's going to bleed, but I love the handwriting of it. Let's see what happens. I love handwriting. All right, so we'll put that there. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do then is we're gonna take the pieces off. And I don't worry about remembering exactly where I wanted them to go because as long as I get close, it's good. But if it's very important to you to have them exactly where you put them, now, uh, before you take them off is the time to take a photo. Snap a photo so you can look at your phone and, or your iPad and put them back together with the photo as a reference. So do as I say, not as I do, right? Okay, so I've got my gloss gel medium and I'm gonna put it really generously on here, making sure I get it right out to the edges in the corner. That's important. And that's also why I'm using the palette sheet because when I do that, I get a lot of it globbing over the edge and sort of making a mess. So, um, so I'm gonna work in that upper left-hand corner and what did I have up there was my envelope. So I'm gonna get it right to the edges and then I'm going to take the glue brush with more glue and press down really hard. That's um, the brush is pressing the air out. Adding more glue onto the top is essential. Pressing down, pressing, pressing, pressing down. And again, pressing with the brush. And then coming back to a previous piece and making sure that's down flat as well by pressing again. If it's going to wrinkle and it's going to bubble, it's gonna do it shortly after you glue it. So you're gonna come back and press it down again and put more glue over the top of it. That way the paper is moist on both sides, under and over. Paper will shrink up when one side gets wet. And if there's no moisture on the top, that's when you get bubbles. So it's not gonna shrink up because we're gonna have moisture on both sides, but we are gonna go back and look at it and make sure that we've got it pressed down nice and flat. So. Okay, now that that's all down flat and I'm pretty sure it's gonna stay flat, I'll keep my eye on it and I'll press it down again with more glue on the top, but it's pretty much set. And then you have to let it dry completely. So you want to make sure it's completely dry. Uh, don't rush it. Um, you know that my favorite way to get everything dry is the desk fan. This is my favorite studio tool. It's on my Amazon shopping list along with all the other supplies for this demo, but uh, this will cut your drying time in half. You never, ever, ever want to use a hair dryer or a heat gun on acrylic because what that does is it flash dries just the surface and then it's still wet underneath and then the underneath part can't dry because it's not getting any air because you flash fried the surface with heat. So you never want to use heat, just room temperature air. All right, so the next step is to apply the watercolor ground. Okay, so this is like a little Julia Childs. The other one is in the oven, and this one was coming out of the oven uh, because I did it previously. So for those of you who ever remember Julia Childs, she put the, the, the uh, item in the oven, and then she took it out of the oven, and it was already cooked. You know, you got to save time somewhere. So I'm going to use um, any old uh, brush is good for this and a little bit of water. So I'm going to... You can see this is a, it's a pretty viscous material. Um, I use a little water, I water it down a little bit to get it a little bit more um, translucent because you can see you could really totally cover your surface with it. So I've added water to the brush and I'm thinning it down right on the surface. So I'm just adding water to the brush and thinning it out. That might be a little bit too much water. 
Okay, so I'm spreading it out with a little bit of water and you can see that that's made it a little less opaque, a little more translucent, but you can see that it is toning down everything back there. It's knocking it back to being subtle, which is really nice because now you can imagine a watercolor on top of this. Uh, you can imagine a watercolor sketch right over this. Now, of course, you can use less water and make it even more opaque, but I want to be able to read this stuff through it. And there it is. So now I'm just going to let that dry. This has got a nice uh, tooth to it. So you can draw right on it with your pencil and then you can um, watercolor right on it. And it's going to take the um, watercolor and the pencil just like paper would. So there's your Happy Friday tutorial. That is now a surface for pencil sketching, watercoloring, and if you choose to pen and ink your watercolor sketch, all of that will work on this surface. And it is the Fredericks watercolor canvas board. I'm just gonna set it up on this to let it dry. And I'm on my nonstick craft mat, so everything just wipes off. Um, there you go. Happy Friday, and thank you for being here.